I see so many men walking around there kind of lonely and isolated. And I'm right now in a place of where I create videos about um, uh, pornography uh, uh, addiction for men, how to get uh, into this no fab dynamics so what is literally stopping watching porn who can we just literally deliver everything that we have learned and experienced ourselves for many years just for men and then i called dan and said it's just like hey let's do a webinar just for men about sexual mastery from celibacy to orgasmic etching and um and everything in between what can be anything around addiction or erectile dysfunction or premature ejaculation or anything that we men carrying as a burden having difficulties to engage with sexually so um, that's the theme and um, uh, I would like to give it to the end to please introduce yourself but I think most of us here in the room know you so my name is Dan for those of you that don't know me a lot of you do some of you I don't know here but uh, um, I've been uh, working with uh, I initiated the Amarin training, the Amarin Arts with Sana some years ago. Before that, I was a love core. Uh, and before that, I was uh, Michael Van Damme sh coming in again. Okay, let's just try again. Uh, before that, I was uh, uh, running a Biodanza Heart Emotion School where I'm not thrown from, from Oslo and Brighton. And uh, I've been on this path of self-actualization for some decades now. So I guess I'm the reason why this... Uh, celibacy versus sexual freedom webinars kicked off because I've been celibate now for about seven years. So the reason I'm celibate is not to manage my sexual energy, but it's to deal with my inability to deal with relating, to know my boundaries when it comes to emotional connections, uh, dynamics, Basically, I was super promiscuous before I was in Tantra, in multi-relating, in all sorts of kind of the more the better type scenarios. And that resulted in my second chakra and my whole pelvic floor being f kind of full of fire and completely unable to relax. Basically, I was stretched in every direction. And then my teacher, when she worked with me some years ago, she said, look, Dan, I don't know how to tell you this, but you have countless women hooked into the second chakra. So this is like I was responding, so both them and I were kind of hooking into each other with so many that actually it felt like I could not relax. I was just, I didn't know who the fuck I was and there was no way energy could verticalize and start going through my center, central channel. So she said, you need to go celibate in order for that to just loosen up, relax and verticalize. And so I said, okay, no problem. How long is that going to take? And I thought maybe like two, three weeks, you know. And she said, well, I know one guy did it in eight years. One guy did it in 14 years. So I don't know how long it's going to be for you. And so, so far, it's seven years and counting. So in a moment, we're going to open the floor for like questions, ideas, reasonings. But it's, in terms of introduction, I think this is uh, enough from me. So Matt, over to you. Maybe you can introduce yourself a little bit. Some of you know me, I'm into this tantric thing about uh, 1997, I had a kind of an awakening um, in a sexual breakdown situation, I was falling in love, and uh, I was thinking a uh, multi-orgasmic man can ejaculate as much as he wants, that was my idea about it. What I did I, um, was with a woman for a week, kind of we locked ourselves off and then I was ejaculating 25 times in a week and I completely collapsed. So my entire body crashed emotionally, energetically and um, got extremely depressive, suicidal, couldn't eat, couldn't sleep, had headache and was completely literally shut off. So went to a doctor and they said just like, yeah, you have just a burnout or a life crisis and gave me, gave me psychopharmaca. And uh, so I just get, uh, got back on the horse after three months or so and had no idea what was going on and then actually ending up one night on a balcony just like what's going on and just wanted to jump and then I had this insight about so what is love and what is Tantra so I just went on this journey um, so I haven't jumped obviously it's still here um, so I went on this journey um, figuring out what is love and what is Tantra um, I haven't 
been really coming to a full conclusion what love is. I'm still on the journey of that. Um, but in 2015 or something like that, I came uh, to the point that I probably will never figure out what Tantra is. Uh, so I was trying to explain it. So I just moved aside from this dynamics. Um, so I've been a facilitator and a body worker uh, on in sacred sexuality, Tantra, body work for individuals and couples. Um, I learned in the beginning through the Mantak Chia way. So some of you might have heard that. It's just like you just learn to squeeze your pelvic floor and then you really hold it, you breathe in, and that's how you get your erection, how you control your erection, how you um, uh, manipulate your um, ejaculation and how you control your ejaculation, all that stuff. So I did that for about 10 years or so and was ending up on a prostatitis and erectile dysfunction and needed to go through a kind of a new reset, what was literally the form of body dearmoring. So I had all this tension release in my pelvic floor, my pelvic area, and I figured out that this is a completely neurological set in the nervous system to clench and contract our PC muscle while we are trying to avoid ejaculation because by trying to avoid that with the sympathetic respond, I literally caused the same <laughs> response. So it took me another 10 years to just like get over that and get my body back in a state of homeostasis where I could relax. And then I came along the polyvagal theory, um, how this is applied in human engagement and connection specifically with my lover and uh, learned one specific thing, what I call the sensory, uh, uh, sensual, sensory inflow of the nervous system, so pleasure-based arousal on a relaxed state. And then I found a specific dynamic that I call edging or orgasmic edging because kind of mastering this ejaculatory choice was, um, was one thing, but then what am I doing with that? So in lovemaking was just really beneficial how to connect and be really deep with my partner. But then on my own, how do I manage and master my own sexual energy, getting off porn, absolutely get off the fantasies and the imagination of all kind of um, uh, ideas uh, around sexuality and uh, figured out that there is a place of self-love and connection where I have the opportunity to go into this orgasmic state and hang out on that state like in waves and can literally expand into the spiritual state or infinity. And just recently, just before the call, I was just chatting with Dan and saying, hey, Dan, you know what? I still think that even though it's sensual-based and pleasure-based, uh, it's not about climaxing, but I still think... Edging is an addiction. <laughs> and I can define that from my own perspective later. Um, and um, yeah, I'm super excited you are all here. And I guess you have all your own journey and your own uh, way of life, how to deal with your own sexual energy and uh, mastering of there is anything that you would like to master, whatever that is. If you're stuck somewhere on the way, if you just... Um, uh, would like to get some um, inspiration. That's what we want to do here today. We all have our own relationship to our sexuality, and that's pretty much probably based on the conditioning that we're carrying in our life through society, through school, religion, parents, you know, what you can name it. And um, But if I want to generalize that in the categories of our sexuality, there are four different ways how I see that. Yeah, so the first place is sexual energy is for um, reproduc reproduction. It's just like for making babies. You know, it's a survival mechanism in our in our psyche. It's just it's just you know on the on the limbic system. It's wired that we just like reproduce and making more of us. You know, and uh, and. That's true for some of us, for some of us not. I have three children. I'm done. My package is delivered. I'm not planning more, and I'm, I'm, I'm good with what is. So this is the first state. The second state of sexual energy is um, recreational sex. It's fun. It's joy. We play. You know, we just have a good time with each other. Um, 
whatever rocks your boat. This can be BDSM or kind of uh, uh, flower sex or, uh, you know, what, whatever works for you. So what is fun? What is joy? How do you play with it? The third step is rejuvenating. So the entire kind of uh, dynamic of the yoga path or the tantra yoga path is you use your sexual energy for your own um, health. I call that it's my health insurance. You know, it's just like semen retention and how to bring that back in the body and how this kind of recalibrates my entire nervous system on an emotional state and physically and how that works. It's, it's just fascinating. So I was uh, digging really deep into that over years. And the, th and the fourth state is the transformation. And transformation is how do we go with another being in this spiritual realm of unity and how how do we connect that to an to an to an higher state and uh that what you said about love i think it's a really really important piece that for me individually sex without love doesn't work yeah and i i, I would not um play small for myself just for the gratification anymore it doesn't bring doesn't bring me anything and it's it's not about gratification it's not about satisfaction it's just just for the for the sheer growth of connection into life this is this is how i how i would define that when you are on the point of no return yeah the emission phase so so you have the plateau the plateau is where you actually in this place of just like it feels really nice it feels really good and then the emission phase is just like a spark and fire kind of uh, gasoline and then all of a sudden poo and then you're up and you're gone right so the the ejaculation what is literally the the uh, it's, it's it's caused by the sympathetic nervous system yeah so when you are in this place um and trying to control that and even though, you know, when you have done that for many years and you have the sympathetic response in your nervous system, the clenching thing, and you don't have a, um, the capacity to relax into it because your nervous system and your body goes automatically in this thing. And even though you have learned and played with that, cultivating that on your own, playing it uh, on, your, on, on yourself, what you better don't do with pornography because you literally f fuck up your entire wiring of your inner circuit when you do it visually. So when you actually master that art on yourself, but then want to practice that with a partner and she is doing involuntary, um, something is happening here, and you doing involuntary the same, th uh, she's doing involuntary the same thing. So th this is what women do. You know, when they clench their yoni, when they clench their in muscles in the yoni, what is a sympathetic response? It doesn't matter how relaxed you want to be, just like she kills you. <laughs> it not, you have no chance. Yeah, I, 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 can, I can tell myself, I'm the tantric master, I have it all together, I'm in the place, I master this thing, you know, the ejaculat ejaculatory choice. If I'm with a partner who just want to kind of throw me over the edge you know? <laughs> she will if i if i want that or not so so what i do beforehand before i play before i go into this state i want to make sure with that person i'm having sexual encounter with what is literally i'm exclusive so with my partner um i want to make sure that we team up that we just play in the same team and the same team is you know when we come to that place i will look into your eyes and i will tell you where i am and I need your help, I need your support. Can you be here with me? Can we do that together? I don't want and I don't need to make you come, but please can you support me because I just want to stay here together with you and hang out in that place. And all women I have been with in my life, I was communicating that with, they were more than happy to support me there. And in this conversation, I had to admit, sorry, you're the stronger gender. <laughs> Yeah, and to add on, on that is, you know, um, I love to surrender. And I love my partner to be in a state where she can literally hold me and surrender me by being totally tuned into me and guide me into that state where I cannot go on my own. 
Now, I love that state and that's so hard to reach. And what it needs is somebody who is really in tune and capable of feeling into me. On the flip side about what you just said, just like me in my power and being capable of delivering kind of my strength and my, you know, just like I can be extremely dominant and I love that. That needs as well somebody else on the other side who doesn't fight my strength. If I have the feeling there are two people who want to be dominant and just going on that thing, it's just like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not interested. So I'm going to go back to that what uh, uh, Eric said that here in the beginning. So it's like, if there is not this love connection, if there is not this kind of, hey, we're doing that here on the same team, but right now I'm leading that team, but I'm not leading that team to 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 kind of gratify my 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 my, um, my ego i just I'm, I'm i'm leading to go on a state where i can't go on my own and where you can't go on your own so it's just this this teaming up dynamic it's it's, it's really really important for me at least yeah i have yeah 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 i've got two I've got two. One is a uh, few guys seem to be not knowing how to manage the frequency of ejaculation because some people like you shared that after extensive uh, coming you feel depleted, which I guess goes to anybody depending on your personal energy levels. And some people it's more, some people it's less. So that brings me to a super important question, which also I'm dealing with because I'm in celibacy. But I'm in celibacy for, uh, as I said, relating reasons, but also get horny and uh, I need to ejaculate, I need to come. So I'm going to share a little bit about ma managing testosterone. So for people like me who have a lot of fire in the body uh, and a lot of, I don't have a problem coming often because I have so much energy in my body. Yes, I could also get depleted if I did it more than my body could take. But what I wanted to put in here is like there is no rule. It really is each one of us has a different energy level. Each one of us has different ability to conduct energy through the body. And that will make a difference to how often you should or should not come. So my kind of recommendation is to take yourself into a life laboratory, if you like, and start experimenting to see what happens when you do and what happens when you don't. What happens when you... Uh, for example, me, so, okay, I'm going to retract a little bit. Being celibate, what that means is that um, obviously I don't have a pull from the partner, so I'm on my own and I can ejaculate or not how I wish. So when I started this journey, first six months, I didn't come at all. And then I had a really odd, weird and very uncomfortable sensation through my right leg from my right groin down towards my right knee on the inside of the leg it felt like water trickling inside my leg that was the sensation obviously there was no water but it felt like fucking wrong it was like i didn't know how to get it out of my system it felt really unnatural weird and not not cool and i didn't know what it was about then I had an a end of the armoring session where a practitioner actually told me that my prostate was enlarged and I should go and check it out. And at first I kind of got freaked out because I know I'm healthy. I know I don't have a problem. I can feel myself fully healthy. But during the session, she actually kept a finger on the prostate and then took a huge hit of fire. Basically, she sweated within seconds, like just was covered in sweat and released a lot of pent up energy in my prostate. And then the prostate went smaller within two hour session. And I thought, okay, that's what it is. So then I started reading a little bit about it and kind of researching what do monks do? What do people who are dedicated to life of celibacy, how do they manage it? And uh, they call it actually changing the oil. So even the monks, every now and then they have to come to actually release the pressure and to refresh the prostate. So I started play, playing with it. And for my energy level at the time when I'm super horny, so this is like spring, <laughs> summer, you know, then, oh my God, then I need to come like three, four times a week. And that keeps me kind of, the, the trickle in the leg disappears. In a winter time, like now I can do it like once or twice a month and it's enough for me. 
But basically what I notice for myself, the reason I'm sharing all of this, is that as soon as I start feeling the trickle in my leg, it means I need to come. It means I'm not, my testosterone is not in balance. So this is one thing that I do. The second thing I noticed is that I kite. I'm a kite, I'm a dedicated, passionate kiter, and I do it every windy day. So when it's a lot of kiting, I find that actually my testosterone balances through sport automatically, so I don't need to ejaculate so much. I also find that uh, when I start getting creative, like write something, do something creatively, uh, make, uh, make furniture, make things with wood, you know, uh, also it balances my testosterone. So I recommend for all of you guys, like look into, basically it's sport, creativity, ejaculation and managing, if I'm managing testosterone. And then see, really become like a laboratory rat in your own laboratory and see what works for you. If you do this, this much of creativity and this much of sport, I mean, let's face it, you do need to do, we all need to do sport. Body needs to move, body needs to burn fire, body needs to kind of work. It's, it's normal. So again, some people are more sporty, some people are less sporty, some people need it more, some people need it less. That's all okay. But we all do need some kind of um, body needs to move. So this is my five cents around managing the testosterone. So are there any questions? Yeah, or Matt? I have an add-on to that. Please do. Um, so, so uh, <clears throat> I mean, we, we, we share that as well in the, in the de-armoring training. There's a certain technique that I use that when you just put your hands around your balls, here are your balls, and you pull your balls away from your body, up, down, left, right, and really stretch your balls. What you do is you stretch as well the, the uh, semen cubes. And what that does is, you know, some of you might have this experience about blue balls when you don't ejaculate for a longer time. I had that really intensely. And that was the only thing that saved my, my life. I tried everything, you know. So what that does is, and I don't know if that's true, but that was the theory that I created out of that through stretching the semen cube the lymph system in this area around the body starts to get activated and is capable of reabsorbing all the fluid from your prostate and from your, you know, from your, from your testes, just like back into the body when you talk about semen retention. So this is what it needs. The, the fluid needs to be reabsorbed into your body, into your system, and that happens through the lymph system, and that needs to be activated. We have a doctor here, uh, I know, um, uh, of, I, I had several conversations with uh, urologists about that. They kind of confirmed that, but it's not scientifically proven. This is one thing. Another thing is, and I got that from a, from a script, from an old tantric script, and you know, you can make your own formula about that. No, when you in your when you in your teenage time, you ejaculate once a day. Huh? No, no. Well, or more. Just like, but this is the the kind of the the rule of thumbs. So when you're in your teenage time, you ejaculate once a day. When you're in your twenties, you ejaculate once a week. When you're in your thirties, you ejaculate once a month. When you're in your forties, you ejaculate once a year. Wait a second. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, I just, I just read that. You, you know, you can make your own rules out of that. You know, you you, you can adapt them. And when you when you in your when you're in your fifties, you just ejaculate once a decade. <laughs> I don't know. Make up your own rules out of that, whatever resonates with you, <laughs> whatever works. The terminology of addiction doesn't exist more than about 50 years or so. It just went into the terms into psychology and, and, and medicine in the, I don't know, 60s or 50s or something like that. So if you see it from a perspective of Addiction is a substitution of something. Yeah? So, so you, you, you use a substance to replace something that you don't have. Yeah? So um, when, you, when you see it from that perspective, um, everything can be an addiction.
But when you just look into specifically what you described about porn addiction, and I was really digging deep into that because I had a porn addiction as well for 20 years or 30 years maybe, um, that one sentence that was kind of breaking the ice for me that the opposite of addiction is not sorbetry, the, op the opposite of addiction is connection. Yeah? And when you see it from that perspective that addiction um, is based on a high level of dopamine, yeah, and when you see dopamine as, as a substitution, whatever that is, can be pornography, alcohol, nicotine, any kind of drugs that delivers dopamine, what that does to your system, the um, dopamine receptors, they're firing always the neighbor receptors. Yeah, and what that needs, it, it just needs more input of the substitution. So you need more of it to get the same level, level of satisfaction. So the opposite of that, what is literally connection, is oxytocin-based. And this is the entire thing about that, what I'm doing or teaching about the sensory inflow of your nervous system when you connect on a physical level with your partner. And we had that with, in the beginning, Eric talked about that, um, the laugh connection between people. So the oxytocin, oxytocin based on the social engagement system and creating safety and connection with your partner is a very, very important piece. But what is more important is when you having oxytocin related connection. So you are essentially, you are just like flowing, you're just like feeling with the person. Your body is included, on, a, on, on your skin is included. What that does, it doesn't fire the dopamine receptors. What it does, it fires the serotonin receptors. And the re serotonin receptor in your body, when they're getting fired, they're telling your system in a magical way, oh, I have enough, I'm good with what is. So what you literally get through that is, instead of satisfaction and you, I need more, you say, okay, I'm happy with what is, I don't need more of that. So the question is, how can you get more connection-related oxytocin in your body when you relate with a person on a sexual level? That's, that's the question that you need to answer. It's, it's, it's just like you're, you're, just, you're mixing the cocktail, you're creating your own formula that is oxytocin-based instead of dopamine-based. It just changes the game. For me, it was... Uh giving myself permission to actually not do anything giving my and also talking with my partner prior and saying look we're just gonna spend a few hours doing nothing we're not going anywhere there is no goal there is we're just gonna be together and then giving myself permission also when i was inside to just stop and relax and very often i would go soft while i'm still inside and just connecting with the heart just like looking into the eyes being with and if the cock goes down it goes down it's okay if pussy goes dry that's okay pussy went dry but like really allowing myself to be with i don't know and this is what it is for now because when i can be okay with it then all this kind of goal oriented like running and trying and performance it just disappears because it literally at any moment we could fall asleep together and then wake up and carry on making love or we could one of us could get up and go for pee, pee or make a cup of tea and come back, or we could start ramping again. So for me, it was giving myself permission to do all of that and anything in between that actually freed up. Because before I was very much like, fuck, 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 fuck. Uh, 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 uh. But it, it wasn't really, there was not much freedom in it. There was not much satisfaction in it. It was very much goal oriented. So maybe try that as well. Talk to her and say these are all possible outcomes that will happen and let's just see what happens. This is one thing. And the other thing I wanted to talk about is the greedy pussy. So Matt already mentioned and, and I fully agree there is no tantric master that can master a greedy pussy. I mean, you will come like this. If she is sucking this, like, it comes from the cervix and the pull is so strong that you cannot, you will just come in seconds. So you need to talk to her and like we have this like you know men are sleazy and women are greedy when it comes to sex there's like 
as lazy men, women hate to be called a greedy pussy as much as man hates to be called a sleazy guy. But actually, it's kind of similar. It's like full on ego. It's just about me, 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 me. And so you need to approach it sensitively. I've done both. I've approached it sensitively. And also I just called him a greedy pussy. And then fire like immediately defense and like, who the fuck do you think you are? And, you know? Yeah. So it's really, you need to kind of, a conversation needs to be had from the heart and, and knowing the sensitivity and, 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 and fragility of what you're actually touching because you're touching ego, strong ego. You know, I'm a sexual woman, you know, I'm worthy. Because if I'm not sexual, who the fuck am I? For them, that's a big thing. Yeah, 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 that, yeah, yeah. So, but the greedy pussy is basically, it's a big one. So address it gently, address it in a conversation, not in bed. Like you do it when, like you're talking to her, whatever, over dinner or something, you know, just address it. I notice that this is happening. What does it feel like? You know, but basically lift it up. So that's going to help next time you're in bed for her to actually get conscious. And like Matt said, you know, women are super will willing to, to follow and to, like, if you ad advise something, if you recommend something, they'll go and try it. So just try to breathe, try to relax, just take a breath, relax. We're not like, hold it, hold it, just like, look at me, connect, you love me, you know. Relax, slow down, like take from the fifth gear down to third or second and just slowly. So that also helps. That's my five cents. Uh, tricks and tips for full body orgasm. So this is a fantastic topic and I think every guy should explore it. But also in my experience, there are no... Uh, tricks and tips because this is not something that you can trick that this is not a kind of party trick this is something that you need to in terms of terminology that we use in our school is the armoring so in order for me to have a full body orgasm the energy needs to come up from my base and need to enter into my whole body through the central channel through shushumna and i need to allow the energy flow to fill me which will have a effect of having a full body orgasm. Uh, Matt, do you have any five cents for that? I probably want to weave that together with um, what I want to talk about, the question that Alf has, and then I had another point where I want to go into that's the difference between being orgasmic and having an orgasm or uh, having a climax, and, uh, and, and what's the spiritual implication of sexual energy so just like I just want to wrap it up and I hope I don't run away with that going too much in my head so I just want to make it relatable as much as I possibly can so when I said about there are four different ways of sexual energy that we can engage with what is procreation recreation rejuvenation and transformation my interest goes what's the spiritual pathway of sexual energy the, uh, in, in, in the tantric path. And you hear that many, many times people say, well, tantra is not about sex. Yeah, but I'm interested in the sexual part of tantra. Yeah. So you, you can choose in which part you're interested in or different people are interested in different topics in tantra. That this, so the spiritual pathway is it. Some of you might have heard about a book um, that calls the spiritual molecule, DMT, the spiritual molecule from Rick Strasberg. Yeah? And he talks, there's one little piece in that book where he shares, you know, there is a, the tantric pathway um, allows people to naturally release DMT, dimethyltryptamine. So that stuff that you just find in ayahuasca and, and you know, and, and, and so D DMT is everywhere. We have that in our brain, it's getting released from our pineal gland. So the spiritual pathway, and that's my take on it, and, and, and I have a really controversial ending of this little sharing here. My take on, on that is that the dynamic between men and women when it comes to sexual intercourse is the, 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 the connection of the penis to the uterus. Yeah? And the connection of the penis to the uterus, like the end said, when you relaxed in there, so it's not like you just have to have a goal. And when she is relaxed, so she doesn't have to massage your cock that she thinks you're a great lover. So when this connection can happen and you stay there for long enough, what I would say kind of an average maybe of half an hour or something like that, in a connection with the person, the uterus in a woman's body the, as a sexual organ has a connection 
to the vagus nerve complex. The heart is connected. The lungs are connected. And somehow, by magic, I don't know if that's true, but you can read that up yourself. There's a connection in the, in, in the pineal gland from the vagus nerve. And what happens is, in this miracle thing, after half an hour, when you are in connection, the pineal gland releases DMT. Yeah? Between the pineal gland and the pituitary gland, there's a little chamber where the cerebrospinal fluid is in that's got flooded by DMT, and that is flushing your entire head, your entire spine with this fluid, and it brings it in a different vibration. So when you talk about kundalini awakening, this kind of shaking and vibration, and you start to get visual, stuff becomes more... Um, I call that milky, as if you have a blur of, over uh, a kind of over your eyes, and it looks kind of different. I've experienced that many, many, many times. Yeah. So, um, I, okay. So, but here comes the thing, and that's the controversial about that. I've experienced that many, many times with a partner when I'm in there. First of all. The worldwide average of sexual intercourse is 6.5 minutes. Yeah? Oh, we, maybe we went up. When I was in my 30s or in my, well, before my 20s, I could beat that for, I could, <laughs> I could come in two minutes, easy. You know? Um, I trained my body when I was in my teenage time. How can people, couples, when they have sex, a spiritual tantric experience when they are just having an average of six, seven, eight minutes of sexual intercourse? And then when it comes to the contraction, so not the being orgasmic, the flowing in the waves, when it comes to the contraction, to the climax and the release of, you know, all this neurotransmitter and hormones, there's a, there's a, a neurotransmitter release that calls prolactin, the moment when you ejaculate. And what prolactin does, it shuts everything down. And all you want is just like, okay, I've had enough. I just want to go to sleep. I'm just done. I, you know, I, I, I had my, my time. I, I guess you can relate to that, right? So to some degree. But here comes the thing. And that's the controversial thing here. When you practice that with a partner and you are on the team love together for a spiritual purpose. You want to grow together, you know, enlightenment through sex, if that's possible. I, used to, I don't know what enlightenment is, but I guess it's this, I call that the, this liquid light thing. Everything opens up and you experience just like, oh my God, we are one. It's just peace. It's silent. It's just, it's just incredibly beautiful. It's not, it's, it's not even ecstatic or blissful. It's just, it's just like, whoa. It's like you stick your head through the clouds and just look, whoa, that's actually really nice up here. I just really enjoy that. So, so I have experienced that many, many times with a partner. When I do that on my own, the edging thing, so there are a few people who are asking around that. So I can edge on my own for half an hour, for an hour. I have sometimes glimpses of that. But, so I've been there, I've bought the T-shirt. I think edging on your own, if you... Even if you don't watch porn, even if you don't imagine pussy, even if you feel the sensual inflow, you feel your cock, you feel your entire body, you feel this entire thing, what's going on in your body, I still think it's an addiction. Because it doesn't create connection because you're on your own. You create a connection between your sexual energy and yourself, but I don't think it's possible without the cervical pathway in the woman's body, through the heart, in the brain. That's my five cents to that. So, thank you, Matt. I want to answer and connect to that uh, with the... Uh, uh, hang on a second, it disappeared now. Marnix. So, I'm trying to find my purpose in life. Uh, and I'm learning from teachings of Jesus, where Christ consciousness can be awakened inside us. Is celibacy helping that? So I want to connect it to, or actually carry on to what you were sharing about now, is that in order for Christ consciousness to awaken, what that actually means, it means the Kundalini needs to come through the first, second, third, and enter the fourth chakra or the heart. That's how 
Christ consciousness awakens. Christ consciousness cannot awaken without Kundalini. The, it's it's one and the same. So again, we're gonna come back to: is that connected to celibacy or is that connected to aging? With like, basically, at some point, you're gonna have to make a choice. If you're like me, who whose second chakra was full of connections to other women, people, unable to release. Basically, the reason, so what was happening with me is that my pelvis was always tight, the whole thing, because it was stretched and always stretched to all directions at the same time. What that creates, it's not like this, and the energy cannot pass through. The kundalini cannot come up. So I had to go celibate for the purpose of, because if I'm carrying on engaging with people, I never give myself a chance to actually unpeel the layers of onion and to go deeper, deeper, deeper to the point where I'm just <sighs> relaxed because I'm always engaging, always engaging, agitating, agitating, agitating. So this doesn't help. So for me, yes, I had to go celibate. If you are someone who doesn't have a problem with that, who finds that you don't have the addiction to connections or basically if your pelvic floor is relaxed, if your pelvis, whole pelvis is relaxed, if your lower belly is physically relaxed, you will find it easier for your kundalini to come up. And then with breathing techniques, with all sorts of techniques, you can actually bring it up and then you're going to have to start working on your heart, on your love. This will actually activate the Christ consciousness. So I don't honestly know if celibacy is necessary, but what I do know, the reason I say that is because I don't know everybody who mastered themselves what pathway they took. But what I do know is that I don't know anybody who wasn't celibate. In order to just come back to myself, this is so sensitive what I'm working on. This is so like, if there's any agitation, it's like, forget it. You can just forget it. You can just forget it. So this is the reason why people go to monasteries, why monks do that, is because you need to be left alone. So that's another reason why celibacy helps. So I'm not saying the celibacy is absolutely necessary. But what is necessary is to be left alone to yourself. Because honestly, for me, it took me about, I think in my second year of celibacy, I started really realizing the value. I was just relaxing deeper and deeper. Like, I can just be myself. I just like, there is nobody pulling on me, nobody biting on me, nobody needing anything from me. I don't need to fucking go shopping. I don't need to do anything. I, but this was really taking my life force, taking my attention from myself. So for me, celibacy is necessary. So, yeah. And there is no other way to awaken the Christ consciousness than Kundalini coming to the heart. This is as simple as it is. So Christ consciousness, basically, it's not one of the last, but it's a very, very high level of spiritual achievement. My one is still not there. So, and I will never stop until it gets there, but that's why I'm celibate, because I need to give myself as much time, as many years needed for that to actually happen. I mean, it's, you know, really dealing with real shit. Like, you need to clean your, the second chakra and the fifth chakra are the last ones to clear, because they're the worst. There really is a lot of stuff, but you need to start clearing it. So what that means is clearing your past first. It means looking at every single relationship you ever had, put it in front of you with meditation, put number, let's say you put a first one, it doesn't need to be in chronological order, but you need to go through every single one of them, put it in front of you and really look at it, detach yourself from emotional involvement and just look at yourself. What, where are you still attached to that particular experience? What else do you need to let go inside yourself as your access to freedom, as your access to this happening? within that particular relationship. And so this will be a process. It could take weeks, I don't maybe less, it will get months. It depends how strong the connection was. And then take a second relationship, third relationship, fifth relationship, all of your ex girlfriends, all of your ex partners, everybody who was who you were relating with. That's like a first thing that you need to do. Without it you cannot untangle and unmangle all this. Basically enlightenment there is no really as far as I understand it there is not really magic to it. It's just you just need to unpack and and untangle every single entanglement you ever had and you're still holding on to. So keep doing that. Start doing that. 
Then once you've done that, then you start looking all the other uh, uh, meaningful relatives, like your mom and dad, your family. Every single little knot that feel like this, you need to release. Because until you fully relax, your second center cannot relax. Your pelvic floor and your pelvis will still be like this. Or it will do this and you won't be able to relax it when you get triggered. So all the triggers you need to clear, and that's one by one. This is why it takes years. So that's like one thing, the first thing they will do. Then you will come into the third center. Then you're going to start looking, okay, so where are my boundaries? Who am I? Actually, it's not chronological because you're going to be working on your boundaries in hand-to-hand -hand at the same time as you're going to be dealing with the relating. But basically, who are you in the world? How, how are you? Are you able to say no? Are you able to put your foot down and say no? Or are you always this like a Mr. Nice guy? You know, let's just like be a little bit like spineless jellyfish and we're just gonna, be, there is nothing wrong with it. But the consequence on your energy system is that you cannot verticalize until you can, you, the third center cannot take the energy that comes through because it will clench. Again, you need to be able to relax it. So you're talking about a path of mastery. This is like honorable journey and please never stop. And so I will never stop either. But it will take fucking time. This is not going to happen tomorrow. So this is this is uh, this is uh, what we're talking about here. Yeah, I, 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 none of us is a finished kind of project, and we are all on a journey. And, and you know, my, my take on on that would be just like, how can we be of support for each other? So, Dan, we are just come to a. It's just eight thirty time. Just like just popped. And uh, so uh, I want to drop a few links here. And um, one of them is from the Dearmoring Arts. Uh, I just saw the page is down. I don't know if that's true, Diane. Oh, so really? I couldn't, I couldn't open the page. So maybe just need to go there. Well, the address works, thearmoringarts.com, but we'll fix the link if, if the need be. I'll look into it. All right. Okay. Thank I don't know what that. it is. And uh, I, I pop you two links in. One of them is you can get a, a, a free sexual mastery coaching call if you want that, If because we just have to scratch the surface. So if you want to tap in and uh, see if there's anything you would like to get um, no more of, please feel free to uh, use that link and just, just book a call. It's free, and we just check in and see how I can support you. And the other one is for the dearmoring as well, if you're interested in uh, figuring out how that works. Um, so copy, paste the links or open the pages. And uh, if you have any question about body dearmoring, we have a training coming up with Deanne, Sana and me in April. Um, it's a 10-day dearmoring training in Sweden in an amazing place uh, in a mansion with it's just beautiful. Just like I, I, I don't want to make more advertising. It's just amazing. Just check it out. You find it under the Armoring Arts and the Basic Training. And um, Diane, would you like to say kind of a closing words? I just wanted to say, guys, really thank you very much for your trust and for your time. And I know time is valuable, and you made an hour and a half. So you know, super happy for that. And uh, I'm open to. Uh, if you have any other questions or ideas or whatnot, get in touch. Um, you can find me through not Matt left a website, theamoringarts.com. I think that's easier, so you know, not the right email address and stuff. But I'm very open and Matt also, if you need to or want to have a one-to-one -one chat or if you have any kind of deeper needs or wishes to, to dig into your shit, then uh, get in touch. We're here, you know. And uh, it was really great to share this space with you and I hope we do it again, Matt. I don't know if you're up for it, but I think... Uh, Actually, would be you know what would be amazing, guys. If you, as a last kind of thing, just ask, uh, just leave in the comments like, what would you like to talk next? Like, what other topics? We only have an hour and a half, man. It's never enough, I know. But like, what what other topic would you like to uh, have a webinar on? What else you would like to discuss? Or if not, that's also okay. But basically, give us ideas to so we can support each other and and do more of this shit. And I don't know. Like, I think it's useful. I hope it's useful for you too. So that would be kind of uh, my request to see uh, if there is anything else they want to meet up. And that's it. Yeah, kind of my last five cents is I, I love the spaces with men because we, I can just be me. I, can just, I, I don't have to be, <laughs> there's no competition. And I just really love this kind of uh, uh, community with men. So, so 
I can say I'm just really appreciative. So thank you, each and one of you being here and, uh, and talking about the theme that is the most precious theme in my life I love to talk about. So um, I can't have enough of that. And if that's true for you, there will probably a few more links in the few next week coming around where we do something else based on the theme that you might have in your mind. So um, this webinar got born from the webinar before, that got born from the webinar before. So if you anything like the end set that you just want to share or want to talk about, um, uh, please put that in or send us an email and uh, we just like do that spontaneously once every other week or so. And uh, thank you so much for joining here. Maybe just want to write as well a few things in the chat, kind of just what's your main takeaway um, what has resonated most with you and um, that we can bring it to completion with that. One or two practical exercises for the armor in the pelvis would be nice. Oh man, you know, sit on actually, a tennis ball, I'm, 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 sit on a tennis ball, sit on a tennis sit ball. On a tennis sit ball. on a yeah, tennis okay, ball. Okay, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, you know, I'm going to promote it a little bit. Fuck it. So there are a number of people here who did our trainings, but those that didn't, uh, if you really want to have your pelvic floor and your cock and your anus dearmored, you have to do it. Basically, for me, it changed my life. My first dearmoring session, I had a cock dearmoring, it was 25 minutes, man. And it changed my life. It literally did. Hang on a second. We need to mute someone here. Okay, done. So basically, uh, having your cock dearmored, having your uh, anus dearmored, having your pelvic floor dearmored by a practitioner, this is a life-changing game, man. You have to do it. Like, everybody has to do it. I, I mean, it's, it's like you just have to try it. I know it's a little bit like, if you've never done it, it's a little bit like, Whoa, but actually, you will love it. I mean, it's very natural and, and very amazing. So that's one thing. But if you actually want to do it, like, full on and spend 11 days doing it, come to a training, because we do that a lot over there. So I just had to say it. <laughs> So basically, heavy cock and anal dehammering. That's that's your one or two things. Of uh, a posture for that, it it's that. Yeah, it's and this. <laughs> some of you, and you can I, imagine what it is, you know. <laughs> some of you have been to the training, then they know what it is. <laughs> but but this is this is a special gesture <laughs> here. All of you, <laughs> you've you've seen it, um, and it's it creates a short circuit in your body. And it just like cleans up the pipe <laughs> like magic. <laughs> All right. Saying that one, thank you so much for joining here today. Yeah, guys. And, um, have a wonderful rest Sunday and uh, spending that time. And see August. some see see some of you next week. Yeah. In Denmark. And and All right, guys. And love yourself. Yeah. Love yourself and and love yourself. Ciao for now. Ciao for now. <laughs>